So today I'm going to do my mid-month wrap-up for you guys. So as you guys may know, I am currently doing the Eurovision Thon Readathon. This is a readathon that is hosted by Helen over at Helen's Bookhaven. I will link her channel as well as her announcement video in the description below and some of the other information that you'll need if you want to find out more about the Eurovision Thon Readathon. It's been really, really fun so far and I would definitely recommend that you go and check all of that out. Helen is a very lovely person and a great content creator so definitely should you should definitely subscribe to her channel as well so anyway yes I am doing the Eurovision-a-thon readathon it will actually end on the 22nd of May which is when this video is going to go up but today is actually actually the 16th of May I'm filming it a little bit ahead just because of reasons <laughs> scheduling time you know how it is so anyway I'm going to talk to you about the books that I have read so far in May. Because the Eurovision Song Contest, when that because of when that happens, this readathon is a month long, but it actually goes from the end of April, sort of middle of April to the middle of May. So it's been going from the 24th of April and will end, like I said, on the 22nd of May. So if you want to know more about the other books that I've read for the Eurovision Song Contest, that is in my mid-April no, sorry, my end of April wrap up. So I will link that in the description below as well and in the cards. So you can go and check that out if you want to know what other books I've read so far for the Eurovision-a-thon. And then my end of May wrap up will have the last books that I read in the last week of the Eurovision Song Contest, as well as the books that I'll be reading for the Do Your Thing-a-thon and the Ally-a-thon. Ally anyway, <laughs> so my reading has slowed down a lot in May because um, my uncle passed away a couple of weeks ago and the funeral was last Friday. My mum and my dad and myself went up to Coffs Harbour which is in northern New South Wales so it's a bit away from where I am which is Tasmania. I didn't necessarily feel like reading as much and also I was organising travel and organising and doing the actual travel so my reading slowed down a bit. But anyway, that's what happens sometimes. So, the book that I was currently reading when I did my end of April wrap up was a book that I have now finished and returned to the library. So that was The Girl Who Speaks Bear by Sophie Anderson. This is a middle grade book that is based on Russian folklore. So there is a lot of magical realism, um, a lot of, yeah, sort of folklore elements to do with humans that turn into creatures and creatures that talk to humans and all of that sort of thing. It is the same author that wrote The House with Chicken Legs and The House with Chicken Legs Actually, I'm not sure if it is the same house, but a house with chicken legs and a yaga appears in The Girl Who Speaks Bear as well. I had a lot of fun with The Girl Who Speaks Bear. It was a really, yeah, it was just really fun, very easy to read, and there was a great pace. It goes along at a lovely pace. It's um, sort of a perfect middle grade book, really, by which I mean that it's full of adventure and full of fun and full of joy. There are some more deep themes to do with um, accepting yourself and, and accepting the world around you and knowing yourself, but it's very much cloaked in that kind of fun, whimsical middle grade type of story. So I did have a great time reading it. On Core Pile, I gave it... A 6.57 which translates to three stars so like I said I did really enjoy it but it probably wasn't as deep as I would potentially have got like to go but again that's because it was middle grade so I've given it three stars but I would highly recommend especially for younger readers or relatively newly established readers that I think they'd have a lot of fun with it and I definitely think it's worth a read so that's that one. The next book that I read was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This was actually my first V.E. Schwab book and I did think about vlogging it but like I said I was away over this while I was away and it just didn't feel like an appropriate time so I didn't. I loved this book. This was so so beautifully written. I really really enjoyed it. I would highly recommend this book particularly if you like magical realism, if you like lyrical poetic writing. It's not 
poetry, so it's not written in verse, it's a prose, but it's very lyrical and very poetic. If you like books that swap POV and swap times of POV as well, then I definitely would recommend. I just thought this was just stunning. I really, really loved it. As you can probably tell, I gave it five stars. So it was a 9.43, it worked out as, on Core Pile, which is five stars. Definitely highly recommend I think it's just a beautiful book. Like I said, it was incredibly well written. Definitely keen to read some more of V.E. Schwab's work. I'm not sure where to start after this one. So if you have any preferences or things you think I would like the most, please do comment below and let me know because I'd love to know. Let me know what you think. So this is about a young woman who, when she is in her mid-twenties, her parents decide to marry her off to... A, a man in her village she has managed so far in her life to avoid that she's managed to avoid the kind of what you'd expect of a woman's life in the I think it starts in the 1400s let me just double check that 1714 so the 1700s the kind of life that women could expect back in the day was essentially they get married usually pretty young so by 24 she is basically and considered an old maid because she hasn't married yet the expected life is that women will marry they will have children that will that's it that's what they do Addie does not want this for her life in a desperate moment to change things she makes a wish or a prayer to the god of the dark um who makes a deal with her it doesn't really go the way she was expecting but basically the deal is that she will live forever she will live her own life however she wants but no one will remember her so that's been her life for hundreds of years and then in 2014 she meets a young man who remembers her and it's about how that changes things and what happens from there so like i said you switch points of view so we switch from Addie in the 1700s the beginning of this deal that she's made and how her life changes and what happens to her because of that in the first sort of 50 60 years of that occurring and then we go to her life in the in 2014 and how she's living and we also follow a little bit of the young man who she meets and get his point of view and what his life is like and what's going on for him but yeah I just thought it was beautiful writing I just really I love this kind of lyrical poetic type of writing it is descriptive without being overly descriptive so she's very good at creating beautiful imagery without having to be over the top if that makes sense and yeah I just I just thought it was absolutely stunning. Definitely a top book of the year. I'm feeling a little bit nervous about the rest of the year because so far this year I've read some fantastic, outstanding books. My other, probably so far this year, my other favourite book has been Crescent City by Sarah J Maas. This is equal to Crescent City. I mean, they're very different books. I would not say equal in the sense of the same type of book at all, but equal in terms of my enjoyment of it. I just thought it was beautiful. I read it super quickly. It is 540 pages long, although it actually looks a lot bigger than that. But that's because it is very tall, but also it has very wide margins. So it's actually really quick to get through. Um, but yeah, definitely recommend beautiful, beautiful book. The next book that I read is another book which... I think I've returned to the library and that is Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. So I ended up buddy reading this with my friend Connor from Connor's Library Corner who I will link in the description below. Of course I talk about him all the time. Not sure at this point why I still say Connor from Connor's Library Corner because I'm sure you all know who I'm talking about. But anyway, so Connor and I buddy read books once a month and this month we did Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. I really enjoyed this one as well. On Call Pile, I gave it 6.86, which worked out to be a three as well three star as well. I've mentioned this several times when I've talked about Call Pile, but as you can tell, the way it works out is that like the Girl Who Spoke Bear got 6.57, Murder on the Orient Express got 6.86, but they work out to be the same star rating. So that's part of the reason why I use Call Pile, just because I feel like it gives you that little bit more nuance of rating. But I mean, obviously it's all 
subjective. Anyway, not the point. Yes, it's why I read Murder on the Orient Express. So this is a closed circle mystery and it is one of her Hercule Poirot mysteries. So it features Hercule Poirot who is the little Belgian detective and it's set in the 1930s. And it's set on the Orient Express, which is a train that runs, I believe, from Istanbul into Paris. Not 100% sure if it still runs. I'm pretty sure it does. I'm reading, I read it for Bulgaria because it goes through Bulgaria. The train, it goes, it does. Um, anyway, so it's a closed circle mystery. Uh, murder, as you might ex expect, happens on the Orient Express. Perot happens to be on the Orient Express when this takes place. And so he becomes the investigator. Because of the situation on the Orient Express at the time, they get snowed in. And so the snow, the train can't go anywhere. The police can't get to them. So the only person who is able to look into what's happened is Perot. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoy Agatha Christie's writing because it's really fast paced and I always find it really easy to read and really fun to read. As you can see from the rating, I wouldn't say that they're my favourite books, it's certainly not on par with something like Addie LaRue, but they're just really fun and easy to read and I definitely would recommend if you're looking for something that's fun and easy to read, well written. You can definitely tell that Agatha Christie is very intelligent and she definitely knows what she's talking about, so I definitely highly recommend any Agatha Christie for, yeah, a fun, straightforward but intelligent and easy read. So like I said my reading slowed down a bit so I only have three books to talk to you about today. I am in the middle of The Miniaturist by Jessie Burton so this is another one I'm reading for the Eurovision Song Con <laughs> Readathon and I'm buddy reading this. It was going to be with Helen but now it's with a few different people doing the Eurovision Readathon which is fantastic. Yes yeah, so we are reading this, we'll definitely have it done by the end of the Eurovision Song Contest, but I'm only that far into it, which is what, a quarter of the way into it, so it will come up in my end of May wrap up. Yeah, but this is a great book that I'm enjoying, and I'm also listening to Dark Emu by Bruce Pascoe on audiobooks, so again that will come up at the end of the month, but I just wanted to mention that I'm in the middle of reading those books as well. So... That is the end of my mid-month wrap-up. Like I said, I'm filming this a little bit ahead of time, so it will go up next Saturday. Yeah. Anyway, what have you guys been reading? How has your month in May gone so far? Let me know down below all of that. Let me know if you have read any of the books that I talked about, what you thought of them, and yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Um, that's it from me today. All of my social media details are linked in the description below. I often forget to say that, but they are always in the description of my videos. So if you'd like to follow me on any of those platforms, please feel free to do so. If you've got this far and you'd like to leave a comment, but you don't know what, then, um, well, in honour of Addie LaRue and this beautiful UK cover, leave me a beautiful little flower emoji to let me know that you were here. Obviously, like I've said, if you do have any comments you'd like to make, please do so in the comments below. Thank you again so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.